Hi students and welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry option. In this video, uh, which is uh, number 13 for the Industrial Chemistry section, it's the last of the little sub-series on sulfuric acid. And in this one, I just want to have a little bit of a look at the safe handling and transport of sulfuric acid. So just to recap then, at this point in time, we know that uh, whenever we're doing dilutions involving sulfuric acid, we're always going to be adding the acid to the water and not the other way around. Main reason for that is the um, exothermic nature of that reaction means we can sometimes have um, some boiling or spitting or perhaps um, the formation of the toxic mist. And each of these um, can cause some significant health um, consequences if they are um, if they occur. So we want to make sure that we carry out any dilutions in the fume cupboard um, just for additional safety, particularly uh, when it involves the handling of very high concentrations of sulfuric acid. Um, as you'll be aware, goggles or eye protection are always important. Um, that, that personal uh, protection equipment is very important. And we want to make sure that we um, keep any potential um, splashes or droplets away from our eyes in particular, but also our skin. For that reason, um, any dilutions are probably best carried out with gloves and an apron or um, a laboratory coat in order to make sure that um, there's that level, extra level uh, of protection, extra protection, um, just to try and keep it away from the skin because of its corrosive nature. The fact that it's such a strong dehydrating agent means that if it does get uh, come into contact with human skin, it can draw the um, water molecules out of those organic molecules, and that can cause significant uh, burning or charring, uh, leaving that carbon deposit behind black, and also can be quite significant pain associated with contact with the skin, particularly with the higher concentrations. So um, best to keep it away. Plenty of running water um, in order to make sure that any spilt acid gets washed very quickly and that the effects of that acid get minimized as quickly as possible and preferably neutralized. So um, weak bases like sodium carbonate or sodium bicarbonate are uh, often kept in solution form to just quickly neutralize um, any spills that can occur. And we did briefly talk about spills in the acidic environment topic. So again, another little two for one deal here. Um, understanding about the safe handling of sulfuric acid also gives you some um, important notes to add to what you already understand about um, uh, working with acids and also how to um, clean and dispose of them. We try to make sure that most of the sulfuric acid that we use um, is, is stored in glass bottles, um, preferably in smallish uh, quantities, smallish volumes, generally less than a litre. Um, often they're prepared in very small uh, like dropper bottles, which you will have used in your course. And it's even important to make sure that when these solutions have been made that we we look at the sides of the bottles because we don't want anything to be um, there as well for someone to go and pick them up and then uh, inadvertently not realize that some of that has dribbled down the side and then you end up um, burning your skin on the acid. Now, the safety does come up a little bit and so it's important to just have a little bit of a checklist of how you would safely handle and dilute sulfuric acid. But one of the questions that we have seen um, in a few of the papers over the years is the whole idea about transporting sulfuric acid. So there's two different forms of sulfuric acid. One is very concentrated, highly concentrated sulfuric acid, which has very few ions. And one is the more dilute form. So when we have very high concentration, that means we have a low ion and mostly molecules. And so that means we can use something like steel. Provided the H plus concentration is low, then there will be no interaction between the steel and the iron, particularly in the steel and the um, hydrogen ions in the acid. So we get no displacement occurring and the steel won't break down. The alternatives to steel are things like glass and plastics. And the problem with those is they're not as hard, they're not as strong. And of course, if there's an accident, they're likely to shatter. And then um, you have the problem of the escape of the acid uh, all over the environment. 
So still is the preferred method for transporting something like sulfuric acid, particularly if it's in high concentrations because it won't react with the acid molecules. The key here is the number of hydrogen ions. And so the problem that we have is once we increase the number of hydrogen ions, then we're going to have a problem with storing it in steel. We want to make sure too that when, um, even if the sulfuric acid is placed in steel, that it's kept well away from any other chemicals which it may be able to react with. And also that it's in a nice well ventilated environment so that if there is any escape, um, then it, at least it's an open uh, environment with plenty of air circulating around. The problem that we have, of course, is sometimes we want to transport dilute sulfuric acid, and that means that the concentration of the H plus ions will be high. And because of that, they will react um, and they'll react very vigorously with steel containers. So you can't transport dilute sulfuric acid in steel. You must use glass or plastic. And the problem with both of these is they're not as hard and particularly for glass, glass can shatter. And so in an accident or something, it can actually increase the problems associated with the escape of the acid. Because the contents of dilute sulfuric acid solutions are very fragile, this adds to the challenges of transportation. If we're transporting dilute sulfuric acid in glass containers or plastic containers, then we just want to make sure that we keep well clear of any potential uh, accidents because that was going to increase the challenges associated with uh, transporting those liquids. Even when we use steel as our transport medium, we still need to make sure that the concentrated sulfuric acid stays away from moisture. The moisture is going to react with the sulfuric acid. Uh, it's going to ionize those molecules and that is going to um, encourage that very strong um, oxidizing nature to attack the iron in the steel. So it's not just that we need to make sure that um, our highly concentrated sulfuric acid remains um, sealed within the steel container, but it also is very strongly sealed by water resistant seals in order to make sure that no water gets in. Thanks for watching.